coming up on Cardinals Insider. Don't pitch to him, boys. Don't pitch to him. Level-headed, consistent. You can never tell if anything phases him. He just, no matter how well he's playing, he just always goes up there with that same confidence. Good hands and a big bat. The players talk about Paul Goldschmidt. Plus, what a story, Daniel Ponce de Leon. They call me in the office after the game. They're like, who's with you right now? I was like, oh, my wife and kid. Would they like to see you go pitch in St. Louis? I was like, yeah, duh. And he's like, all right, well, you're going. It's a memory that lasts a lifetime. And later, it's given to the baseball player who best exemplifies those values that my father had. Relive one of baseball's highest honors, the Roberto Clemente Award, coming to St. Louis. It's all ahead on Cardinals Insider. Welcome to Cardinals Insider, I'm Ozzie Smith. Paul Goldschmidt adjusted to the Cardinal way quite quickly during his first season. His powerful, bad, and strong demeanor set the tone on the field every game. His nickname, Goldie, shines in more ways than one. Here's what some of the guys had to say about their first baseman. Goldschmidt with a drive, out to deep left. It's at the wall! Goodbye! Off of Big Macklin! A prodigious blast! The serious guy, I mean, this guy don't laugh, <laughs> don't, don't smile. Um, when I see him, um, I saw last year a um, couple times that he hit a homer and started laughing. That's, that was a great moment. Professional. It's uh, professional in every single way that that word could be described. You know, his work ethic, his preparation, his, his uh, training room, his weight room. He's a great guy, great guy, veteran guy too, so he's helped the team every time. Methodical, he has you know just a way of going about things. He doesn't overthink things, but he definitely thinks things through. And he comes up with new revolutionary ideas about efficiency and about you know things we can do. Reliable think would be it. You know, you know you got a good guy over there first. He's gonna he, and he prepares himself daily. He's got his routine. If you ever see him throughout the clubhouse, he's always doing his certain things at certain times and in the weight room and everything. So he, he's always prepared. Goldsmith hits it a ton out to deep left and it is gone. Don't pitch to him boys. Don't pitch to him. I would say level headed, consistent you can never tell if anything phases him. He just, no matter how well he's playing, he just always goes up there with that same confidence. And um, he's just a great, great example for how to maintain your cool, even when things might not be going your way. Goldschmidt has a high baseball IQ, a very intelligent player, uh, and he likes sharing his knowledge, especially with the younger players. It's good to be around him. Straight ahead on Cardinals Insider. Our manager, Ben Johnson, called me into uh, his office and he's like, well, the reason why is because you're going up to the big leagues tomorrow. You're going to Chicago. Hear the story behind making it to the show. Also coming up. Doing the scoreboard this year with no fans is, it's just as odd and strange to us as it is to anyone. It's really weird to work a game with no fans in the stands. Take a look inside the Cardinals scoreboard control room during a game with no fans. A player's call up to the big leagues is as exciting as it gets, and I will never forget that day. Last week you heard some Cardinal memories of their first game in the show. Let's hear some more of those memories. What a story, Daniel Ponce de Leon in the big leagues in a scoreless inning. It was a weird story. I was in the dugout during the game, like seventh inning comes around and Roscoe tells me to go in and check the cameras. Never done that before and I didn't even know what I'm checking for so I walked in like I'm supposed to check the cameras and then he like showed me, I was like alright, they look alright. I walked back and I was like they're fine, he goes okay. Then they call me in the office after the game and then once again they sit me down like hey did you check the cameras and I was like yes, why are you guys asking me this and they're like alright we're gonna go look over some film and work on your mechanics or something and I'm in my head I'm sitting there thinking like the, the game I just threw before was nine innings shutout game, why are we doing this you know, my, I feel like I'm alright. 
And then all of a sudden they're, they're like, who's with you right now? I was like, oh, my wife and kid. And they're like, would, uh, would they like to see you go pitch in St. Louis? I was like, yeah, duh. And he's like, all right, well, you're going. And then I got up and picked up Stubby and swirled him around. No hits allowed. Walk three, struck out three, 116 pitches. Good for Daniel Ponce de Leon. What a story. Playing with Memphis at the time, we were playing in Reno, and I showed up to the field, uh, I think the first game of the series, and our manager, Ben Johnson, called me into uh, his, uh, his office and said, hey, uh, Tommy, how are you feeling today? You feeling good? I was like, yeah, I feel great. Why, what's up? And he's like, well, I'm giving you the day off today. It's like, well, I just told you I feel good, so what's the reason? He's like, well, the reason why is because you're going up to the big leagues tomorrow. You're going to Chicago. You're flying out of Chicago tomorrow morning. So his heart must be racing as he gets a chance here at Wrigley. Um, so obviously I was absolutely through the roof and uh, called my wife and my parents, and uh, fortunately they were, they were able to get uh, flights out to Chicago overnight, and I got a good crew of, I think, 12 to 15 people out there to come watch, watch my MLB debut. And, Unfortunately, I struck out on three pitches, but it was pretty much only uphill from there. So excited and um, had the jitters for uh, making my MLB debut at Wrigley. So brightest of lights were, uh, were on that night and it was a crazy experience. So much fun. I was in the Texas League in San Antonio. It was pretty early in the year and I was not really expecting it. And I get that phone call. We were leaving that morning to go on a road trip so like you leave your stuff at the field and they put it on the bus. So I had to go to like the stadium and get my stuff off the bus and then get like back to my house and pack my stuff and then try to get to the airport. And it was Cinco de Mayo, which didn't have much to do with anything, but it meant that everyone, all my friends back in Florida were at Sunfest, which is like a South Florida thing if you around there. It's like a big like fair carnival type deal. So everyone's at Sunfest and I get my call up and they're all like, end up like leaving that and like scrambling to get to a bar to watch the game because we were playing the Marlins in San Diego which was nice so everyone in Florida like could still watch the game and, and watch me play and I gave up uh, a home run to like the first guy I faced. I was out eating with uh, Mike Myers and Arturo Reyes and I get a phone call from Mike Schilt, he was the manager in Memphis and he tells me how's your stay been here in El Paso? And for a second, I thought I did something wrong. You know, I thought it was something wrong. He goes, you're going to the big leagues. And for me, everything just kind of unfolded from there. I started tearing up, called my parents, and they were screaming out the roof. It was, it was pretty amazing. A strikeout for Alex Reyes in his Major League debut. I was coming to St. Louis, um, and the, the game I got put in, you know, it, was a, it wasn't a big, big situation, but it was a 3-2 game in the eighth inning where you know, I thought, there's no shot I'm getting in this game. And I hear the phone ring, it's like, Reyes, get up. And for me, I, I just, you know, I panicked. My heart started beating real fast. But once I got on the mound, everything just turned into baseball. Ground ball and a 1-2-3 debut. Straight ahead, fans are flooding the stadium in cardboard form. We all know that we have the best fans in baseball. But have you seen some of our fan cutouts around the ballpark? Let's take a closer look. There's a new way to cheer on the team this season. For the meantime, Cardinals Nation is now Cardboard Nation. Fans can submit a photo of themselves and have the photo printed out in 2D and placed in the seats here at Bush Stadium. Well, we've introduced a new program called Cardboard Nation, a little bit of a play on words from Cardinals Nation. As we've seen across the league at a lot of other ballparks we have here in Bush Stadium, the ability for fans to purchase a cardboard cutout. It's not actually cardboard, it's weatherproof gator board, coroplast. We will install the image here in the stadium, so it's a way for fans to be present here in the ballpark even during a time when we can't actually have fans in the ballpark. Fans have been sending in a variety of photos. From celebrities to furry friends, Cardinal Red is flooding the ballpark. Well, that's been one of the real fun things about the uh, project so far, is seeing all of the photos come in from all over Cardinals Nation. We've received a lot of pets. We've got dogs, cats. We have a chicken. We have received a cutout uh, photo of someone's pet horse. So. 
It's sort of all over the board what we've received, but it's been a lot of fun to see those go into the seats. You may notice on TV that the cardboard cutouts rotate around the ballpark. This gives some variety and surprises to every game. There are several sections that are shown on a lot of camera shots behind home plate, so we've been rotating those on a game-by-game -game basis. We've had some of our fan purchases back there. We have also had some of our former players and uh, Team Fredbird. We've also got some celebrity Cardinals fans that have been rotated back there, so we've had John Goodman, uh, John Hamm, Nelly, and the various other Cardinal fans. The process is easy. Just snap a photo in your favorite cards gear and purchase your cutout online. All proceeds benefit Cardinals Care. We've sold several thousand so far and we've got a lot of seats left to fill, so we'll continue to sell them and install them through the early part of September. And fans who are interested can go to cardinals.com slash cardboard and uh, find out more information there. And once the season is over, fans will be able to take their cutout home to add to their favorite Cardinals memorabilia. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Emily Stevens. Game days at Bush Stadium are much different this season. While there's no fans in the stands, the team scoreboard crew still creates game day atmosphere for players and coaches. Here's what it looks like to present a game with no one in the seats. Doing the scoreboard this year with no fans is a little bit challenging, but you know we're trying to push our way through. It's, it's just as odd and strange to us as it is to anyone, the fans, the players on the field. I mean, it's, it's really weird to work a game with no fans in the stands. The jobs that we have right now are basically the jobs that we would need to make it feel like a game for the people who are here, which are the players and the coaches and, and, and media. So we have an organist. We have a PA announcer. Players have to be announced in order for it to be a Major League Baseball game. We have people playing music. Uh, we have uh, somebody putting up graphics on the scoreboard, their he player headshots, and we have somebody that just keeps track of the whole game pitch by pitch uh, as the game happens. That's actually my job for the game. So pitch by pitch, I'm keeping track of everything that happens, balls, strikes, outs, and then as I enter in each play, it'll update the average or it'll update the, the pitcher's ERA or whatever, just so that the stats and averages and all the data on the scoreboard can stay accurate. The other day, we actually heard the guys in the outfield calling the ball, saying, mine, 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 or I got it, I got it. Like, that's something you normally can't hear, but now you can hear, except for when we're playing the fake crowd noise, that's of course. Really what you have to think about is every action or every crowd reaction that you normally get from a game. And so really what we try to do is, is get a collection of sounds that would mimic a regular baseball game. And so we start with a, a crowd bed of just a murmur. Um, and then we just add to it. We just layer on different levels of excitement depending on what happens during a play. And so a normal fly ball to the outfield, there's generally a crowd reaction and then if a ball goes into the gap, there's a bigger reaction, and then if a run's gonna score, there's more reaction. So, you know, our philosophy has really been just start with crowd noise, and then just keep layering on more crowd sort of reaction to the play. Hopefully, I think the, the intent was to bring back some normalcy to the game. So there wasn't that, that awkwardness of, this is watching baseball in 2020, this is watching baseball like you're used to it with crowd noise, crowd reaction. It feels like a game that you've watched in the past versus, wow, this is something really weird and unique for 2020. Hopefully it, it sort of, it brings you back to a lot of those fun times you've had at the ballpark and, and sort of reminds you of what it's like to be at a baseball game. Still to come, Cardinals Care is helping kids in the community get ready for school. Last season, Luis Clemente came to St. Louis to recognize Yadier Molina as the 2018 Roberto Clemente Award winner. Yadi became the fifth Cardinal to win the award, giving St. Louis the most winners of any team. Let's relive that special moment in May 2019 as we head into the Insider Archives. Our ceremonies tonight was something very special.
truly special award is about to be presented. Last October, Major League Baseball announced Yadier Molina as the 2018 recipient of one of baseball's highest honors, the Roberto Clemente Award. The uh, Roberto Clemente Award basically started out as the Commissioner's Award. They rename it after Roberto Clemente, my father, and it's, it's given to the baseball player who best exemplifies those values that my father had on the field and off the field as well. Yadi is an incredible representative of Puerto Rico and also of what we all stand for. And he's done it through everything, the, the baseball classic. He's a great, great contributor to the Puerto Rico. What he did definitely is worth of recognizing and having him become the fifth Cardinal to win the Clemente Award is very special to us. For that effort and for his work, other work on behalf of the community, tonight the Cardinals are proud to honor Yadier Molina as the recipient of the 2018 Roberto Clemente Award. Obviously, when you do this kind of job, you don't look into winning a award. You know, you do it because uh, it's coming from your heart. And, and the way the way we did it, I mean, it's uh, the way we help those people over there. And we're still helping people that, down there because we really need more help there. But it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. I'm, I'm happy for, for me and my family to win that award because it's, it means a lot for us. It means a lot. It really does. You don't have to be a hero by saving someone's life or doing something like extreme. Every single day of your life, your actions dictate your character. And a lot of the times, you know, when you reach out and do something positive, it has a trickle effect in your community, in your town, your city, your country. There's something happening here in St. Louis with these players that are, that are giving so much, you know. And St. Louis Cardinals, the most Clemente Award winners, we're very proud in the family to have this franchise be that. The annual Redbird Rookie School Supply Drive provides kids with items they need for school. This year, that includes supplies to stay safe and healthy too. Take a look. Our uh, Redbird Rookies distribution event is usually our culminating event at the end of the year where the kids normally work really hard to earn um, prizes and rewards and this is the place that they normally come and get the rewards but since we couldn't have large gatherings this year we decided to do something for the kids so we uh, came up with this drive-through event um, where they could safely come and get school supplies um, from us PPE for this year um, and then we also had uh, some schnooks coupons in the bag and a Cardinals hat. Rubber Rookies is our free non-competitive baseball softball program uh, we, we give them uniforms and equipment and kids from all over the St. Louis area and surrounding counties are, you know, participate in this program. Um, but most importantly, we have off-field extracurricular activities as well in the areas of health, education, mentorship, cultural arts, and scholarship. So normally we have tons of events throughout the summer that these kids can come to and we, we put on concerts and a health fair and, and you name it, we, we have it for these kids. But um, just due to COVID, we weren't able to put these on. So um, in light of that, we thought, again, it was really, really important to have a distribution event, something to give the kids for this for this year and hopefully make their school year um, as easy and as successful as it can be. Coming up, I answer one of your questions during Ask Ozzy. It's time for this week's Ask Ozzy. Bruce in Macomb, Illinois asks, which former Cardinal that you didn't get to play with would you have liked to have been teammates with and why? That's very simple. There's two actually. I would have loved to have played behind Bob Gibson. You know, having the, the chance to play behind someone who has that type of ability makes it very easy for a player like myself who's notably a defensive player. The other would be Chris Carpenter, pretty much out of the mold of Bob Gibson. Uh, when you have a player like that, you can only learn from them and become better as a player. It would have been a lot of fun getting to play with both of those guys, as good as they were. Thanks for the question, Bruce. If you want to submit a question, head on over to cardinals.com insider and click on the Ask Ozzy tab. We'll be right back. <music> 
Which Cardinal would you want to take a road trip with? That's a tough question. Let's find out what the guys said on this week's Ask a Cardinal. So I would love to take a road trip with Paul, for sure. Because like a road trip, so you want someone who's like adventurous, probably outdoorsy, which is not me. So, you know, if something happens, you know, he's gonna be able to tell us how to save our lives. Definitely um, the West Coast. I'd like to see um, uh, Olympia out in Washington, and I'd probably take Kisner. I think we could have some great conversations driving the long ways. I'm going out west seeing national parks. I don't know if Yachty would want to do that. Yachty, would you want to go see national parks? I don't know. I'm not sure. National Park, I've, Carp's a big history buff. Weeders and I have a lot of fun together. I'll say Matt Weeders, but only because I don't know if Yachty would want to do that. Whose car are we driving? Are we driving my car or that person's car? That's a proceed carefully because this changes everything. Wayno can come with me. He, he would entertain it. I gave him a hard time for saying he talks too much, but I think I'd want some entertainment while we were driving. But I, that's going to go one way or the other. It's going to be great or, or terrible. Is it over an hour? Two hours. John Gant. Um, I believe he has the wherewithal. John Gant's coming up for a lot of my answers, by the way. Um, this is great. Um, he has the wherewithal to be able to help me out when the car inevitably breaks down. Ooh, if Brebs is driving, I'll say Brebs. In the, in the Honda Pilot, I think. <laughs> That's it for this episode. You can always catch us online at cardinals.com insider and on YouTube. And we'll see you next week.